And I would like to thank uh, Kevin Payne and Jenna Missouri of the Student Government Association. Can we give them a round of applause? Kevin Payne, Jenna. <laughs> They, along with other members of the Student Government Association, have been most helpful in making this event possible. Today we're going to have two major addresses. The first will be by Dr. Theophil Ovinga, who will discuss the pharaonic origins of philosophy. And that will be followed by an address by Dr. Charles Finch, who will discuss the pharaonic origins of medicine. And then we will have a panel discussion with Van Sertima, Finch, Obinga, and Brother Habib C. At this point in time, I, I feel it's, it's, it's very significant that you all have an in-depth understanding of the life experiences of Brother Obinga. And so I've asked Dr. Finch to come and to provide us with a formal introduction of Dr. Obinga. Dr. Finch uh, is, is responsible for organizing the effort to bring Obinga here to the states and is very familiar with the works of Obinga and his involvement with Diop and others. So at this point in time, I'd like to invite Dr. Finch to the podium to give us an introduction of Dr. Obinga. Thank you, Tony, and thank you, my deep and heartfelt thanks to the UDC Student Government Association for helping sponsor this program. Programs like these are beginning, perhaps already have, made Washington not only the capital of the nation, but perhaps the capital of the new African Renaissance here in this country. I say that because I am constantly amazed whenever I come to Washington, the level of enthusiasm, interest, the level of knowledge, the level of willingness to study and to learn, and I can say without fear or contradiction that it isn't quite happening on this level anywhere else in the country, including my own city. So that is the reason why, you know, coming to Washington is always a kind of um, renewing experience for me, and uh, so therefore it, was, it is always a signal pleasure. Five years ago, five years ago to the week, down in Atlanta, Georgia, we inaugurated the first Nile Valley Conference. That signal event has had tremendous reverberations down through the years. It kind of, it kind of marks a watershed in the history of ideas in the African world. In a sense, many of the things that have happened since then have been direct or indirect outgrowths of the Nile Valley Conference. Things have been happening up to that time, but that conference seemed to be crystallized a lot of ideas, trends, movements uh, that had sort of been germinating in the past 10, 15, 20 years in the African world. Within six months after that conference, Check on to Joe made his first and only visit to the United States to Atlanta, Georgia for eight days. He actually, by the way, came up here to Washington to the NAFIO conference during his stay here, but he was only here a short time. That was sort of the next phase in the process that is, or is leading to what I like to think of as the beginning of the new African Renaissance uh, in this way, following in the ideas and footsteps of Check on to Joe. We're talking about a man who is without question one of the leading intellects of the 20th century, perhaps one of the leading intellects of this or any other century, a man who almost single-handedly accomplished the task of reconnecting African history to its sources in the Nile Valley, in the Nile Valley cultures and civilizations, using a rigorous scientific method. And that is perhaps his greatest contribution to us is showing us how to induce scientific rigor and discipline into these studies and pointing the way in that direction. However, he was a man alone. He was a man struggling against odds, totally alone, totally by himself for perhaps the first half of his adult career. What is fascinating about this story 
is that he not only had to contend with European scholarship, the European academic establishment that was arrayed solidly against him, but he also had to contend with apathy and hostility from within the African world for a good 15 years after he had begun these studies. Far from disillusioning, disillusioning him or demoralizing him, it just made him that much stronger. But it was with a sort of mental or spiritual sigh of relief when in 1964, a young Congolese scholar who was fired by the ideas and imagination of Shekhan Tejop confronted him, if you will, in a Paris uh, men's room. So anxious was he to meet the Shekhan Tejop that he pursued him into the men's room in order to make his acquaintance. When Dr. Job saw uh, the student who at that time was Theophile Benga, he knew who he was and it, he said, it is as if he said to himself, at last I have found my successor, and they embraced and began a collaboration that endured to the end of Professor Job's, prima, uh, uh, to the end of his life. So in, in Teofila Benga, we have a man who is, a, was, is and was a disciple, a colleague, and a successor to Shek Onta Job. In fact, Professor Job said to him one month before he died, he says, well, I do, not feel, I do not feel uneasy about death now because you are here to carry on. But we have not merely somebody who was a disciple, not merely somebody who was a student, but somebody who in his own right is an intellect of the first magnitude. A man who has mastered six languages to speaking, speaking vo uh, voca uh, uh, verbal languages, and has also mastered the reading knowledge of a half a dozen more. A man who has uh, a doctorate in history, but also has mastered the rigorous disciplines of philosophy. Historian, linguist, philosopher. Um, Renaissance man, if we can use that term. A man who has made invaluable contributions to his own, of his own, to the new African Renaissance. Not only continuing and amplifying and extending the work that Sheikh Arthur Job did, but adding his own original and unique contributions to this effort. He has numerous articles and publications to his credit. Also, several important book-length publications, including the African Africa in Antiquity, that was published some 15, perhaps 20 years ago, and the forthcoming African philosophy in the Pharaonic period, which is being published now in French, hope to be translated in English within two years, of which an excerpt has been reprinted in this issue of Egypt Revisited. So those of you who have been fortunate enough to obtain this book on this outing, even if you have read just a few lines of the essay, can grasp the intellectual depth of the individual here who is now about to address us. So with his presence here, with his, um, with his willingness to come and be among us, we are perhaps moving into the stage three, stage three in a series of steps in the process of what, in Chekhantis Jop's terms, was or is the new African Renaissance. Currently, he is director of the International Center for the Study of Bantu Civilizations. He certainly is someone who is a signpost for us all in this work, and that includes everyone in this, in this room, and he has felt it a great necessity to reestablish the ties that bind between the two halves of the African world. So I would just ask you, as if I need to, to give him your undivided attention, because you know how these things work. We take him for granted because he's here now, but we can never be sure that there will always be an opportunity to hear someone like Teo Ophila Benga. And as I had occasion before to say, there may come a time in your life when your grandchildren will ask you, where were you when Teo Ophila Benga was in Washington, D.C.? So, without any further ado, please welcome Professor Teofil Obenga.
for a reason of convenience, we will, uh, both of us, stay here so that we can, uh, we can be uh, close. You know, it's the same mind, so it will be much easier to uh, stay close together so that I can translate for him. Dear brothers and sisters, I would like to thank all the friends that made possible my trip here in Washington, D.C. Diop uh, is no longer here physically. But he is still alive and among us with his uh, colossal work. Aujourd'hui, je, je voudrais vous dire que la jeunesse africaine n'a pas abandonné l'œuvre de Cheikh Antadio. I would like to tell you today that uh, the African youth has not abandoned uh, Diop's work. À Dakar, à, à, au Sénégal, à l'Université de Dakar. In Senegal, at the University of Dakar. À Libreville, au Gabon. In Libreville, Gabon. À Kinshasa, au Zahir. In Kinshasa, Zahir. À Brazzaville, au Congo. In uh, Brazzaville, Congo. Yaoundé au Cameroun. In Yaoundé, Cameroon. À Paris. In Paris. À l'UNESCO. At the UNESCO. À Martinique et en Guadeloupe. In Martinique and Guadeloupe. Ici même aux États-Unis. Here in the United States. La jeunesse rend continuellement des hommages à Cheikh Anta Diop. The youth continually uh, pays tribute to Cheikh Anta Diop. Il existe un club pyramide de Cheikh Anta Diop créé par les étudiants à Kinshasa au Zahir. There is a club called Pyramid Cheikh Anta Diop created by Zahirian students in uh, Zahir. Donc Cheikh Anta Diop est toujours vivant parmi nous. Therefore Cheikh Anta Diop is still alive and among us. Euh, je voudrais très rapidement essayer d'évoquer devant vous la philosophie égyptienne. I would like very briefly to uh, uh, talk with you about some aspects of Egyptian philosophy. Uh, la est une très noble. Philosophy has always been considered as a dignified uh, scientific discipline. Si bien qu'on dit la philosophie est grecque et l'émotion est nègre. Therefore, one has uh, said, you know, that uh, uh, philosophy is uh, Greek and emotion is uh, black. Et donc, euh, pour nous, tout ce que nous faisons, c'est un relève de l'irrationnel. Therefore, whatever we do as blacks, you know, is somewhat irrational. Cette perception psychologique est très répandue. That perception is very much uh, widespread. Alors, si bien que de l'Égypte ancienne, on ne parle que de religion. Therefore, whenever one talk about uh, Egyptian religion, uh, Egyptian philosophy, it would be only seen in the light of uh, religion. Et si bien que euh, les auteurs occidentaux et tout le monde est convaincu que la philosophie est d'essence grecque. So much so that uh, whenever people talk about philosophy, including scientists, they think that uh, philosophy is, in a sense, uh, a Greek science. Alors justement, je voudrais très rapidement évoquer devant vous euh, le contexte historique de la naissance de la philosophie grecque. That's why I would like today with you to, uh, uh, you know, undertake the, uh, an explanation about the uh, historical context of the birth of philosophy. Euh, la philosophie, euh, euh, les Grecs eux-mêmes disaient que la philosophie est née à l'étranger. The Greeks themselves uh, said that uh, philosophy was born outside Greece. Euh, en effet, euh, cette indication des Grecs peut nous permettre de faire une chronologie de la naissance de la philosophie grecque. That indication by the Greeks themselves can help us to come with a chronology of uh, the history of philosophy. Somewhere around 1000 before Christ, the Persians already had uh, already a system uh, of thought explaining the world. They had uh, distinguished the principle of good uh, through the god uh, Ormuz and the principle of uh, uh, wrong through the god uh, Ariman. Ariman. 
Euh, à la même époque, à peu près, les Chaldéens en Babylonie avaient expliqué le monde comme étant la conquête de l'ordre sur le chaos. À la même époque, les Chaldéens en Babylonie uh, expliquaient le monde sous le concept de chaos, de monde chaotique. Entre le 14e et le 10e siècle avant notre ère, between the 14th and the 10th century before our era, les, les sages de l'Inde expliquaient déjà les Vedas. The uh, sages of India uh, ex already had already started explaining the Vedas. Et il y a en particulier la conception de Agni, le feu cosmique. And there, there was in particular the conception of the cosmic god, you know, the, uh, the cosmic fire. Ani. Ani. Qui se trouve dans l'eau, dans les nuages, dans les bœufs, dans les hommes, un peu partout. Which is present uh, among men, uh, uh, water, uh, plants, animals, and all over the universe. Donc quand les Perses, les Chaldéens et les Indiens expliquaient la formation de l'univers, il n'y avait rien en grec. Therefore, when the Persians and the Chaldeans started explaining the essence of the universe, it was a no man's land in, uh, in Greece. Nothing existed in Greece at that time. Homer, Homer and Hesiod, the leading intellectual uh, Greeks, were not born at the time. Alors, quant à la vallée du Nil, qui est un pays voisin de l'Égypte et de la Grèce également, Concerning the Nile Valley, which was uh, a neighbor of uh, Greek, uh, proceur, of Greece, excuse me. Le professeur Van, Van Sertima a parlé très longuement de l'Egypte hier. Yesterday, Professor Van Sertima uh, expanded on uh, the problems in uh, uh, ancient Egypt yesterday. Mais je voudrais dire que entre 3000 ans et 2000 avant notre ère, But I would like to say that before 2000 and 3000 before our era, uh, l'Egypte avait déjà inventé la pyramide. Egypt Egypt already had already invented the pyramids. Uh, uh, the hieroglyphics. Uh, même, uh, uh, and uh, even the hieratic writing system. They had already invented the cult of uh, the dead. Et la conception de l'immortalité de l'âme. And the conception of the immortality of the soul. Ils avaient donc imaginé un royaume céleste en connexion avec le royaume terrestre. They had already designed a, uh, a principle of uh, uh, the beyond in connection uh, with uh, the terrestrial world. Tout à l'heure, le professeur Finch vous parlait de la médecine égyptienne. A while ago, Professor Finch was to, will uh, talk about Egyptian uh, medicine. Les Égyptiens faillent triompher même de la mort avec la mummification. Uh, Egyptians uh, almost were almost able to uh, triumph of death uh, with the principle of mummification. Entre toujours 3000 ans et 2000 avant notre ère, between 3000 and 2000 before our era, les Égyptiens avaient déjà disserté, discuté sur l'existence de la matière et de l'esprit. The Egyptians were already able to uh, uh, have a speech on existing and on matter. Ils avaient déjà créé une psychologie qui distingue le corps puis des entités spirituelles de l'être humain telles que le K et le Ba. They were already able to have a speech in psychology uh, making a distinction between the Ka, which is the, uh, the soul, and the Ba. Les mathématiques, la géométrie, l'astronomie étaient également euh, inventées dans l'Égypte ancienne. Mathematics, astronomy and geometry were already invented by the Egyptians in their temples. De même que le calendrier astronomique actuel. So was also the uh, calendar, the actual calendar. Et pendant euh, tout ceci, euh, Homer et Hésiode n'étaient pas encore nés. And during all that period of time, Homer and Hesiod were not uh, born yet. Voilà pourquoi tout autour de la Grèce, il y a l'Égypte, il y a l'Inde, la Chaldée, la Perse. That is why uh, all around Egypt you have uh, Persia, uh, Chaldea and uh, other um, uh, countries as well. On ne peut pas désigner un seul savant, un seul philosophe, un seul mathématicien grec avant leur contact avec les civilisations 
que je viens de présenter très brièvement. One cannot identify one single uh, Greek intellectual, Greek scientist who's been in contact with such uh, civilization during that era. La Grèce va euh, s'éveiller intellectuellement, culturellement, scientifiquement entre le 8e et le 6e siècle avant notre ère. Grèce was only able to develop intellectually, to start developing intellectually only between the 8th and uh, the 7th century before Christ. Et s'il vient qu'ils vont prendre l'écriture séducienne vers 800 avant notre ère. And it is only in uh, 800 before Christ that they started uh, adopting the uh, Phoenician writing system. That is to say that uh, chrono on the chronological scale, when, it, uh, when Greece started reading, Egypt had already 30 centuries be be behind her. C'est à peu près pour donner un exemple vivant. Uh, to give you a living example. Par exemple, dans mon village africain en Brousse, on commence à lire, mais on commence à apprendre à lire aux enfants maintenant. Uh, in my African village, uh, we are just starting teaching to the children how to read quand, and write. Quand l'écriture, uh, par exemple, l'écriture latine en France a déjà quatre siècles d'histoire écrite. When uh, the Latin writing system in France has already four centuries. Uh, be behind it. The difference between Greece and Egypt was of, a, of the same scale. This is a historical fact. And oftentimes, you know, historical facts, you have to take them as they are. Donc, l'éveil intellectuel, scientifique, philosophique de la Grèce ne commence qu'entre le 8e et le 6e siècle avant notre ère. Therefore, the uh, scientific and cultural development of Greece doesn't start before the uh, 8th and the 7th century before our era. Et le premier philosophe, c'est bien Thalès de Milet. And the first philosopher is Thales, Thales of uh, Miletus qui a vécu à la fin, entre la fin du 7e siècle et le début du 6e siècle avant notre ère. Thales lived in Greece between uh, the, sixth, the seventh and the sixth century before our era. Alors, Thales est nommé euh, par les Grecs eux-mêmes Protos Sophos, le premier sage. Uh, Thales was named by the Greeks themselves as uh, the, uh, the first sage. Protos, c'est le premier sage. Protos means the first sage, the first wise man. Donc, avant, les Grecs n'avaient pas de philosophe, avant Thalès. And therefore, before Thalès, the Greeks did not have a philosopher. Ça, c'est les Grecs eux-mêmes, d'après leur propre histoire. And the Greeks themselves are saying this fact in et, their history records. Et les Grecs ajoutent aussi que ce premier sophos, ce premier philosophe, n'a pas eu de maître n'a pas été enseigné, sauf qu'il a pris sous la direction des prêtres égyptiens. And the Greeks themselves are saying that this first philosopher, Thales, did not have any other instructor besides his intellectual instructor, uh, his uh, Egyptian instructors. Bon, je voudrais pas être pédant, mais je voudrais tout de même euh, apporter un fait euh, par, de, du grec lui-même. I do not want to seem to be a... Uh, uh, to use uh, difficult terms, but I would like to uh, give you the uh, exact term in, uh, in, in, uh, in the Greek language. He just explained, uh, he just read the Greek uh, sentence and uh, meaning that Thales himself studied under the Greek, under the Egyptian uh, leadership. Voilà ce que les Grecs disent eux-mêmes de leur premier philosophe. This is what the Greeks themselves uh, say about their own philosophers. Mais cela ne doit pas étonner. And this shouldn't surprise anybody. 
Because uh, if the Chinese want to build an atomic bomb today, they come here in the United States in order to master the methodology. It is a matter of technological advance and scientific advance as well. Therefore, Thales uh, could not have learned uh, philosophy anywhere else but Egypt. He had to go to Egypt according to the uh, testimony of the Greeks themselves to learn uh, philosophy. You can see for yourself that the context itself uh, surrounding the birth of Greek philosophy uh, uh, allows us to be doubtful about the uh, uh, so-called uh, Greek miracle in philosophy. Mais, uh, européen but uh, European ethnocentrism a fait que la, on a écrit et enseigné que la philosophie grecque était née presque ex nihilo. Uh, has always contended that uh, philosophy was created almost ex nihilo. Ce que les Grecs dit ni pensé. Which the Greeks never said and they never thought that before. Dans un dialogue de Platon, appelé le, le Gorgias, In a dialogue uh, of Plato called uh, Gorgias. Au 511 D, uh, in uh, the book called 511, 511D. In the paragraph 511D, uh, Socrate, uh, Socrate donne le prix du voyage depuis Athènes jusqu'à l'Égypte. Socrates is detailing the price, you know, for the trip uh, covering uh, 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 the trip between uh, Athens and uh, Egypt. Socrate ne pouvait pas donner ce prix si, si ça n'existait pas. Socrates could not have given such a price if the price was fictitious, if it did not exist. On payait six drachmes, l'ancienne monnaie grecque, on payait six drachmes pour payer le voyage entre Athènes et l'Égypte. The price for such a trip uh, was six uh, drachmes. Oui, uh, drachmes was the... Uh, currency uh, in Greece at the time, Ce qui fait à peu près de quatre, de quatre uh, which uh, means that it's a, a currency of uh, four grams, approximately. Et, uh, mais le mot philosophie but the word philosophy itself, is comprised of uh, is including the word, the suffix sophos, which uh, means a uh, wise person, sage. Le mot sophos n'est pas un mot grec. The word sophos itself is not a Greek word. Ce n'est même pas un mot indo-européen. It's not even a, an Indo-European word. C'est un mot étranger à la langue grecque. It's a word that is totally foreign to the Greek uh, uh, language. Et ça, n'importe quel philologue compétent vous le dira. And in any competent philologist uh, could explain this. C'est un mot bien sûr grec, mais qui n'est pas d'origine grecque. It is a word that is of uh, Greek, but it is not of Greek origin. Comme je trouve aujourd'hui dans le dictionnaire français, le mot tennis, mais le mot tennis n'est pas d'origine française. Uh, it's like today in the French vocabulary, you can find the word tennis. But tennis is not of a French stock. La même chose, même le mot donc philosophie n'est même pas grec. Even the word philosophy itself is not of Greek essence. Bon, on n'a pas le temps, c'est un peu technique, de vous expliquer l'origine, mais ça tient d'un mot égyptien qui uh, veut dire enseigner, instruire l'Égypte. For technical reasons, I will not uh, detail this because we don't have much time. But uh, the word itself in ancient Egyptian uh, uh, meant uh, to teach, to educate. Alors, si on fait le point très rapidement, so therefore, when, if, just to wrap it up real quickly, que même le mot de Sophia n'est pas un mot grec. Even the word Sophia is not a Greek word. Et que les Égyptiens 
And one has to recall the fact that the Egyptians themselves had to pay uh, for their trip to go to Egypt. And the first Greek philosopher has studied under the leadership of the, uh, the Egyptian priests. And when the Greeks start, started you know, uh, using the uh, uh, Phoenician writing system, uh, ancient Egypt had already 30 centuries of intellectual tradition and wisdom behind her. Bah, alors la question qui peut se poser, c'est que les, les Grecs, qu'est-ce qu'ils pouvaient bien prendre, qu'est-ce qu'ils pouvaient bien apprendre dans l'Égypte ancienne? Now the question that uh, would arise is, what would the Greeks, you know, learn uh, in Egypt? Voilà ce qui m'amène à parler très bièrement des principaux éléments de la philosophie égyptienne. And that's why I would like to expand on the principal elements of uh, 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 Egyptian philosophy. Et la question de toute philosophie a toujours été, quoi est The main question, really, in all philosophical systems has always been, what is Et, c'est-à-dire euh, l'explication du monde. That is, that is to say, an, explain, an explanation of the world in general. La philosophie égyptienne pose d'abord quelque chose qu'on appelle le nous. The Egyptian philosophy uh, postulates that you have a concept of a noon in existence. Le noon est avant la création. The noon comes before creation. Avant Dieu. Before God. Avant les hommes. Before man. Avant le ciel et la terre. Before the skies and uh, the earth. Avant tout ce qui existe, avant tout l'univers connaissable ou même inconnu. Before all, uh, what uh, existed or what could have existed. Uh, before the existence of the earth. And uh, this principle called Nun has uh, been uh, seen by the Egyptian as uh, uh, a concept of uh, water, of aqueous liquid. liquid. Donc voilà, le Nun existe, c'est un état du monde avant le monde. Therefore, the noon is a state of the world before the world, before the world came into being. And before the world came into being, as it is known today, existed a matter uh, called noon. Mais ce noon préfigure déjà les dimensions du monde tel qu'il est. But uh, this uh, noon is already a prefiguration of the dimensions of the world as it existed, as it already, uh, uh, as it uh, existed before. Alors, je lis un texte de Coffin Text, un texte de sarcophage, Coffin Text en anglais. Coffin. I'm reading here a Coffin Text now. Uh, le nous dont l'étendue est celle du ciel et la largeur, la largeur celle de la terre. The noon whose... Uh, a uh, dimension is uh, one uh, of the heavens and uh, whose uh, length is one of the earth. Donc, au fond, cette était Therefore, this uh, primordial matter was widespread. Mais pas but it was not organized. Alors, mais tout était condensé dans le Noun, dit encore un texte du temple d'Edfou. But another text of the temple in uh, Edfou, these are the uh, ancient Egyptian uh, temples, uh, is saying that uh, everything was condensed in the Noun and that uh, uh, the uh, initial matter was inorganic and that uh, the Noun was condensed into one single form. Et un autre texte, le Coffin texte, dit ceci, euh, « Je suis nul, l'unique, le sang pareil, je me suis créé moi-même. » Another Coffin text says, « I am uh, nul, I am the unique, I am uh, without equal, uh, I have created myself. » Alors, mais euh, 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 dans ce nul, il va, il va se passer un événement. 
But in this noon will happen something. Something will happen. Ra. Ra. Le symbol de l'intellect. The symbol of intellect. De l'esprit, de l'entendement. For spirit and uh, understanding. Le symbol de l'intelligence supérieure. The symbol for intelligence, for superior intelligence. Comme à peu près le nous de Anaxagore. Like the uh, nous uh, described by Anaxagore. Alors, Ra va surgir. And Ra will, uh, will come out de ce liquide primitif of this uh, primitive liquid par sa propre volonté. Uh, through his own uh, uh, will. Et il va jaillir, il va uh, en un jaillissement lumineux, c'est le soleil. And he will come out in a, uh, in, in, in a light all of a sudden. Et le texte dit ceci. And the text says, the book of dead, le livre des morts. The book of the dead. Je suis l'éternel. I am the eternal. Je suis Ra qui est sorti du noon. I am Ra sprung from Nu. Je suis le maître de la lumière. I am the master of the light. Alors, euh, donc voyez-vous que avant, il euh, y a d'abord l'Égyptien pose de la matière au début, avant la création, il pose de la matière. Therefore, you see that the Egyptians uh, 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 take the principle of, mat of uh, matter at the beginning. Et de la matière va sortir le, le, dieu, le démiurge, le dieu créateur. And it is from this uh, matter that the demiurgos will uh, come from. Alors, or, dans beaucoup d'explications de la genèse du monde, in many explanations of the genesis of the world, il y a d'un côté le dieu créateur, you have on the one hand the uh, God creator de la matière que Dieu va créer. and on the other hand the uh, matter that uh, God is going to create. Dans la Bible, par exemple, In the Bible for example Elohim, Elohim on ne doit pas dire God mais les dieux parce que Elohim est pluriel en hébreu. Uh, one has to uh, because Elohim is a plural form in uh, Hebrew. So we can't relate to God to create the God in the plural. But the Bible translates God in singular, but in plural in fact. Donc les dieux uh, ont créé dans la Bible, le Dieu est séparé de la création qu'il crée. So therefore you can see that in the Bible God is separated from the beings that he will create. La même chose dans le Timé de Platon, le Dimur est distinct de la création. In Plato's Timaeus, the Dimurgos is separated, you know, from uh, the uh, beings that he will create. L'Égypte pose d'abord de la matière et de la matière sort le principe organisateur. Egypt uh, postulates the existence of matter first, and from that matter will uh, come out life. C'est bien que le débat même contemporain entre L'esprit et la matière, les Égyptiens ne connaissaient pas ce débat. Therefore, today's debate uh, between uh, contradiction on the debate between uh, matter and spirit was unknown to the Egyptians. Et je crois que si nous continuons à philosopher, peut-être le 21e siècle retirera la synthèse entre l'esprit et la matière, synthèse déjà faite en Égypte il y a plus de 30 siècles. And if we continue to philosophize, maybe in the 21st century, we will come with a synthesis between matter and spirit. But such a synthesis was already present in the Egyptian philosophical right, uh, system uh, year, uh, centuries ago. Alors, vous verrez que les premiers philosophes de la Grèce, therefore you will see that the first philosophers uh, in Greece, que ce soit Thales, ou Anaximandre, ou Anaximène, etc., et les premiers philosophes grecs vont sur la nature de the first Greek philosophers will philosophize on the nature of the universe. Parce que les idées que je viens de résumer étaient répandues dans l'Égypte ancienne. Because the ideas that I just explained were already widespread in ancient Egypt. Que ça soit à Memphis, à Heliopolis ou à Thèbes, on enseignait ça dans les écoles. In Memphis, Heliopolis or Thèbes, it was already taught in the schools of et, higher learning. Et même les mots. Euh, mourait avec euh, ses écritures sur les bandelettes. And euh, even uh, the dead people, you know, the mummies, uh, you had on the, uh, the cords that were used to mummify them, such, uh, such references. 
Therefore, the Greek students present in uh, Egypt were uh, aware of such ideas. And that's why one can say that the Greeks did not innovate compared to ancient Egypt because they referred to uh, water, to air, to uh, the earth and uh, fire as the main constituents you know, of their philosophical system. But this was already present in uh, the ancient Egyptian uh, philosophical system. Alors voilà très brièvement exposé un premier point important de la philosophie égyptienne. This is very briefly explain a very uh, important point in uh, uh, an appraisal of uh, Egyptian philosophy. Alors je peux également parler très brièvement euh, de l'existence. Comment comment cela est venu à l'existence C'est aussi une question capitale en philosophie. I would like to uh, talk very briefly about uh, existence and how the uh, sun came into being also, which is a very important philosophical point in the history of philosophy. Parce que les...